Hey guys, it's been a while since I last posted a video because I've been super busy with real life work, but I finally found some time and prepared a brand new tutorial for you. Today I'm going to show you how I color grade using Dehancer. Dehancer is a plugin that simulates real film behavior and effects and is used for film like color grading in DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut and Premiere Pro. Also the Dehancer Colorist Award is approaching, I thought it would be a really good time to make this video. By the way, this is not a sponsored video. I just wanted to create a tutorial to show how I use it. So let's jump right in. I brought in a few clips to my timeline. The first one is a concert shot. It's quite vibrant with lots of light and color movement. In such footage where there's a lot of light movement, choosing a hero frame can be quite difficult. But I usually prefer to pick a bright moment. Okay, now let's move to the color page and start quickly. We can begin by creating our node tree. First, I will create four or five nodes. Let's add two parallel nodes to the fifth one. Then I will add two more nodes, which I will move these down. I will add one more parallel node. And finally, let's add two more at the end. Don't worry about adding so many nodes because I'm not going to even use all of them. This is just a fixed node tree. You can comfortably use this structure in all of your color work. Also, you can work more detailed by using separate nodes for each process. Let me quickly name them. In the first node, I'm going to use CST, which is Color Space Transform. We are going to convert our clip to DaVinci White Gamut color space in this node. The second node is for balance. The third node is for exposure. And the fourth node is for contrast. Here I forgot to add one node for saturation. So I will add that now. You can use these parallel nodes for different purposes. For example, they can be used for log wheels or HDR wheels adjustments. Or you can use power windows to control the light in certain points in your image. Also, these lower nodes can be used depending on your needs. For example, skin tones or maybe curves adjustments. But I won't even name them here. I'm only naming the imported ones now. In this node, we are going to use the dehancer. So I'm calling it look. In the final node, we will use the CST again to convert the footage to Rec. 709. By the way, I should mention that I've set the timeline color space to DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate. Okay, as always, I will apply color space transform to the first node. Since the footage was shot with a Sony camera, the input color space is Sony S Gamma 3 Cine, input gamma is S Log 3, output color space is DaVinci White Gamut, and output gamma is DaVinci Intermediate. Then I will go to the final node and do the same thing. This time, input color space is DaVinci White Gamut, input gamma is DaVinci Intermediate, output color space is Rec. 709, and output gamma is Gamma 2.4. It already looks pretty good, but when we are done, you will see just how much of a difference we made. Let's start with the white balance. In such complex footage as this one, nailing the white balance is of course harder because of the fast and chaotic movement with lots of changing lights. I usually try to pick a moment where I can see more white and base my white balance on that frame. For instance, this frame looks good, so I will increase the temperature slightly. This is before and this is after. Let me move forward a bit. Yeah, this is a better frame. This is before and this is after. Yes, that looks pretty good and our white balance is spot on. Let's continue with the exposure node. First, I will reduce the gain. I will also slightly lower the gamma. I will reduce the lift a bit, but actually it makes more sense to look at a darker moment for this. This frame is a better one. I think we need to raise it slightly because we don't want to lose the details in the blacks. I also want to reduce the highlights a little. Lastly, I will increase the contrast just a touch. I think it looks sufficient for now. So we can move on to the contrast node. Again, here I won't do much. I will just create a simple S-curve using the curves tool. To avoid clipping, I will first pull down the highlight point a bit and I will also pull the shadow point up a bit. Then I will create a point in the shadow area and pull it down. Likewise, I will create a point in the highlights area close to the mid-tones and pull that up. This is before and this is after. Finally, let's increase the saturation a bit. For this, I generally use HDR wheels. We can increase the global saturation here to a good level. As I mentioned, you can use the parallel nodes for details. For instance, you can go to HDR wheels and intensify the shadows and blacks a bit more. This depends on your own footage. Now it's time to use the dehancer. Let's apply it. 
to the look now. It's already looking interesting, but we will go through many adjustments from start to finish. Press Shift F to enlarge the view for better visibility. At first, I will scroll to the bottom of the menu and click the Disable All Tools button because we are going to make all the adjustments from start to finish ourselves. I'm setting the quality to high. If you trust your computer's performance, you can do this too. But if you think your computer can't handle it, normal quality works just fine and won't cause any issues. Now we can go back to the top. To begin with, we'll change the source because we are working in DaVinci White Gamut color space. We are coming from DaVinci White Gamut and now we are in the look node. So we need to change the source to DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate. Okay, I'm going to enable the sections I need one by one. Let's enable Film. Then I will enable Film Developer, which we will use for contrast. I really like the Film Compression tool. We will use expand for adjusting black and white points. Then I will enable print where I usually select Kodak 2383 print film. Lastly, I will enable color head and there are effects afterwards that we will get to later. Okay, let's first choose a film profile from the film menu. You have so many options, but I usually prefer Kodak films because the colors and tones feel more natural to me. Also, I selected Kodak 2383 in the print section, so it will be more cohesive. Let's go with the Kodak Portra 400. Below that, there is the push and pull EV option. In the Enhancer, Film Exposure Control is implemented with this tool. You can adjust the exposure between plus two and minus two stops. After selecting the film profile, I will adjust the exposure in the input menu. I will increase it slightly. Then I will adjust the white balance again. Our footage still has cool tone overall, but that's fine for now because we are going to fix that later. Next is the Film Developer menu. Here I will increase the contrast boost just a little. I will also adjust the gamma, lowering it a bit. Lastly, I will increase the color boost to make the colors more vibrant. Now we can move on to the Film Compression menu, which is a very useful tool. It prevents the white from clipping, so I will increase the impact. Let's also raise the tonal range a bit. I will also increase the color density. When I do before and after comparison, we can see how effective this is. Next up, we have the expand tool. This tool adjusts the black and white points. Since there are many dark areas in this clip, I will lower the black points. Also, I will raise the white points. Now let's move on to the print menu. This menu also has its own general settings, but I don't usually make big changes here. Just small adjustments are enough because we've already made the main changes earlier. Next, we have the color head tool. And this is also one of my favorite tools in the Enhancer. It allows you to make fine color and tone adjustments to the actual look. Since we have a lot of blue tones, I will shift it slightly towards yellow. I will also move the second slider towards magenta and increase the red in the third slider. This is before and this is after. We have managed to reduce the blue tones in the highlights. Below that, we can adjust the tones of the shadows, midtones, and highlights. Since the shadows and dark areas are too cool, I will increase this. This is before and this is after. Here you can see how much of a difference it makes. I will adjust the midtones and highlights accordingly. I think the result is excellent. At this point, we can add the effects. I usually prefer using grain, halation and bloom. The Enhancer's film grain is very powerful. You can choose the custom option and make all the adjustments yourself. Then I will add halation. I usually go with the 35mm option. I'll adjust the intensity because I don't like it to be too obvious. Finally, let's add the bloom. I will also adjust its intensity so that it's not too overpowering. There are other effects you can use, but this is usually enough for me. At the bottom, you can enable clipping indicator in the monitor section to check if there are any issues with your image. So this is our final result. I think it looks pretty cool. If the adjustments you made with the enhancer are too intense, you can reduce the total impact to about half in the output section for a better result. I find the Enhancer to be an incredibly useful tool, but I understand that it's a bit pricey, but if you do a lot of color work, it can really save you many, many hours. I still use it comfortably in many important client projects. If you ever want to purchase it, you can use my code to get a 10% discount. If you have any questions about the Enhancer or DaVinci Resolve, feel free to ask them in the comments. I try to reply every comment as much as I can. If you would like to support me, you can subscribe to my channel. So thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care.